Hello and welcome to another video. There are times where you have a problem in math and you know so many methods of solving the math problem, but your teacher says you can't use that method to solve it. So you go, okay, I think I know this other method, just like what we have here. Typically, looking at this limit problem, you would go, well, by direct substitution, I'm going to get 0 minus 0 over 0. So that's a perfect condition for L'Hopital's rule, but you're not allowed to use L'Hopital's rule. So you go, maybe I should use squeeze theorem. Well, you try to squeeze it, but you notice that there are no boundaries on both sides. And when squeeze theorem fails, L'Hopital's rule fails, algebraic manipulation fails, where else would you go? Let me show you what um, squeeze theorem is going to do to you if you try to use it. So we got um, we have sine, we have uh, negative 1 is less than or equal to sine x, which is less than or equal to 1. That's how you start your squeeze theorem. You start with a function that's here, and you know that it's always between negative 1 and 1. Then I'm going to say, um, I'm going to multiply this by negative 1 so that I have negative sine x. See, I'm building gradually from here, negative sine x, but that means I'm going to flip this sign. I'm going to multiply this by negative 1, multiply this by negative 1. So what we have now is 1 is greater than or equal to. So because I use negative 1 to multiply, the signs flip. But I can reverse it this way, and it takes me back to the original. Look, if I turn this around, it becomes negative 1 is less than or equal to negative sine x, which is... So I could actually change this to negative 1 is less than or equal to negative sine x which is less than or equal to 1. So I'm back to the beginning. I just changed this to the negative sine x. Now, what's the next step? I need to bring in x. So I have to add x to negative sine x. So if I add x to both sides, this is going to become x minus 1 is less than or equal to x minus sine x, less than or equal to x plus 1. So I've added x to both to each of the terms. So the next thing to do is to introduce this part which is going to be you divide every term by x cubed. So let's do that. So if I divide by x cubed, I divide this by x cubed, I divide this by x cubed. It looks like the table is set. So the next thing to do is to take the limit as x goes to 0. And that's where the problem is going to be because when I take this limit, this limit is not finite, okay? It goes to, if I take this limit, this limit is going to go to, I think, negative infinity, I believe. This one, this limit is going to go to, I think, positive infinity, I think. So, one is going down, one is going up, and sine is just dangling in the middle. So that's why squeeze theorem will not work here. Because if you take this limit, you won't get the same answer as this limit. They're not even finite. Okay, so even if both of them go to infinity, positive, positive, you can use it. So what else can you do with a trig function like sine? That's where your knowledge of series, the series or what you call the Taylor series representation of sine becomes relevant. Okay, so let's do that quickly. Now, to help you remember, cosine and sine can be, rep can be represented as a polynomial. And all you have to do to remember this, I'm going to write the general one, you just take what you need. So remember this, that the two trig functions, sine and cosine, can be written as 0 over 0 factorial. Well, this is a positive. You put a plus here, you repeat a positive x to the 1 over 1 factorial, then you go minus x squared. This is just a very easy way for you to remember over 2 factorial minus x cubed over 3 factorial. You see, I have plus, plus, minus, minus. You start again, plus, plus. So it's going to be plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus um, x to the 5th over 5 factorial minus 
you know, um, x to the sixth over six factorial. You just keep going like that. Keep alternating plus, plus, minus, minus, plus, plus. Okay, now which one is this? Well, it's neither sine nor cosine, but I wanna help you remember how to write them. So remember that cosine is an even function. Sine is an odd function. So what you wanna do is take out everything here that is odd, all the odd terms, and that would be your sine. Take out all the even ones and that would be your cosine. And that's it. So now, because we're dealing with sine, I'm just gonna work with sine right now. I know that sine x can be written as, start with the odd functions, it's a positive. So this is gonna be, what would this be? Um, x to the first power divided by one factorial. So that's gonna be x over one Okay, x over 1 factorial is x over 1. So we're just going let it, to let it be like that. So this is x. And then I'm going to skip to the next odd term, which is minus x cubed over one, 3 factorial is going to be 6. I'm going to leave it that way. Plus, uh, what's the next one? It's going to be the next odd term, which is going to be x to the 5th over 5 factorial is 120. Okay, you may leave it in factorial form, and that's it. Why don't I want to continue? Because I don't need the rest. The more terms you take, the more accurate you're going to be. But because of the special case we have with this problem, you don't need all the terms. So what would I do? I'd try to manipulate this now. So I'm going to do x minus sine x. That's the next thing. What will x minus sine x be? Well, x minus sine x is going to be x minus what I have here. So it's going to be x minus this, which is x minus x cubed over 6 plus x to the fifth over 120 plus it keeps going oh that's that's supposed to be a minus it doesn't matter okay and then we stop here so what happens when I expand this what I have left is this x will eliminate this and then what I have left is just just this I just have x cubed over 6 because this minus changes this to a plus and I have this to be minus x to the fifth over 120 um, and this will become plus something in the future what's my next move now i divide by x cubed so i have x minus sine x over x cubed will be this each of these terms will be divided by x cubed and watch if i divide this by x cubed i'm going to have one over six if i divide this by x cubed i'm going to have x squared over 120 plus whatever is here divided by x cubed, I don't care what it is, but that's what it, it has more x's, so there will be no x in the denominator. Everything is gonna be canceled out. Okay, and now I take the limit. What is the limit as x goes to zero of x minus sine x over x cubed? Well, it's gonna be the limit of this, which is the limit as x goes to zero of one over six, okay, minus, x squared over 120 plus whatever else is here, which I don't care about, because as x goes to zero, this term goes to zero. Every term that is next after this contains an x on top will go to zero. This is the only term that doesn't have x, and it remains as one over six. And that's the, that's one way you can get this. You can, there's another method you can use the, the triple angle expansion formula that you could use. Um, where you, you have to do a substitution, maybe in another video, I'm gonna let you see that. So whenever you get a problem where you cannot use L'Hopital's rule or um, squeeze theorem is not working, then you wanna go to the Maclaurin series. Um, there, this is the Taylor series, but it becomes Maclaurin series if you're centered at zero. Never stop learning, because those who stop learning have stopped living. Bye-bye.